Today is Wednesday, April 22nd, and you are joining WNUPC Live for our evening broadcast. I'm just kidding. I thought that'd be a fun way to intro tonight. I heard that you guys are struggling uh, to keep up with what day of the week it is, and so I thought I'd start with orienting you to, the, to just that. Today is Wednesday, April 22nd, and it's a blessing to be with you all tonight. Uh, we're going to open our devotion with prayer, and as I'm speaking, you uh, might want to take advantage of the comment section to put in your prayer request. If you have things that you're dealing with specifically, uh, needs in your home, in your own life, in your community, obviously those for, the, for this country and for the world, plug those in there. Uh, we've been focused on COVID-19, uh, and so we tend to forget that there's other things that are going on. Uh, life is still continuing on. Other crises are still going on. Other health issues are still happening. So let's not lose sight of those um, as we uh, focus tonight in prayer. So why don't we agree together? I'll give you a couple of more seconds to put your request in there. I'm stalling for you right now. And uh, plug those in and then pay attention. I know we tend to hack it up a lot in those comment sections as this devotion is going on. And that's okay. I think we're happy to see each other. And so, uh, but don't lose focus of the prayer requests as they're being entered in uh, as as we pray tonight. I'm going to lead you, but you're going to pray with me. Take a moment and, and actually, hey, uh, voice your petition also to God. Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to gather together in your name. God, we thank you for your goodness, Lord. We thank you that you're not limited, Lord Jesus, to one place and one crisis uh, at a time, oh God that you can minister to those who are suffering from COVID-19 as well as those dealing with every other illness and crisis going on, Lord. God, touch those who are sick in their bodies. Uh, touch those who are lost, oh God. Draw them unto you, Lord Jesus, like only you can, Lord. Uh, minister to those who are dealing with financial crisis and all other kind of things, Lord Jesus. God, we trust you with them tonight. Even those that are listed right now in the comment section, God, we agree together in your name, Lord Jesus. God, we're lifting up our government officials before you, those here in America and across this world, Lord, as they uh, face situations that they haven't faced before, that they don't know the answers to, Lord. God, we ask that you would touch their hearts and their minds, that you would anoint them, Lord, with knowledge, Lord Jesus, that's beyond their ability, Lord. Grant it, Lord Jesus. Help them, O oh God, to do the, what is right for each and every one of us, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Be with us this night, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, our devotion tonight comes from Luke 21. And I would ask that you would go and read Luke 21 in detail for yourself. Um, I'm going to read to you some of the points in it, uh, not word for word. Uh, it's always good to read for yourself in case you uh, are used to trusting other people. That's not good when it comes to word. Always read for yourself. So Luke 21 uh, is a dialogue between the disciples and Jesus. When the, the disciples ask Jesus about when these things shall be, Jesus starts off this whole dialogue with them about, you know, the temple being torn down and being raised up again and, and, and this whole deal about the incoming. And so they want to know when, when, when is this going to be and what signs shall there be that these things are coming to pass? And so Jesus begins to list off a whole bunch of things that they can look for uh, before the end has come. Coming. And so some of the things that he said to them uh, are that uh, many will come in his name, you know, saying that they are Christ. Uh, when you hear wars and rumors of wars, don't be terrified. The end is not yet. Nation will rise against nation. Uh, there'll be earthquakes and famines and plagues in many places. The church will suffer great persecution. Yeah, before the end comes, the church will, the church will suffer great persecution. How men's hearts will fail because of fear. And on and on. He lists a lot of things in there, and most of them are pretty scary, uh, especially if you are not a follower of Christ. But then in Luke 21, 28, he says, So when all these things begin to happen, stand and look up, for your salvation draweth not. And so this, these warnings for the church are meant to be, you could almost say, signs of encouragement. It's okay. When you see these things coming, you don't have to be afraid. Uh, it just means that my coming is is sooner. Have you ever noticed that whenever people try to pinpoint uh, how to pin, try to pin Jesus down to tell them exactly when he's going to return, uh, he he dodges that that question. Or should I say, when the end would be? Uh, he never gives a straight answer, except for the times when he says, "No man will know the day of the hour when the Son of Man shall return." But 
He's never given a date and time. Therefore, we're never going to know a date and time. And he says that specifically. There's no man knows. Uh, other times he answers in parable form. Uh, for example, in uh, Matthew 25, he, he gives us the parable of the, of the ten virgins. And, you know, five were foolish and five were wise. Uh, the five foolish uh, virgins weren't ready when the bridegroom came, but the, the five wise were. There's another story in Matthew 24 when he talks about the good man of the house, that if he knew in what hour his house would be broken into, he, he wouldn't have suffered any loss. He'd be ready. And so <clears throat> notice in the parable with the five, um, with the ten virgins, that they all knew that there was a time coming when the bridegroom will return. Some are ready, some were not. Also, there's all kind of um, imagery and, and symbolisms in, in Ezekiel and Daniel and, and Revelation about these end time prophecies. And, and I don't know about you, but it hurts my brain when I read those, trying to figure out, you know, what country is this representing? What's that supposed to mean? And I know there are people that feel like they know, they know it all, you know, to the exact point. What this means, this means that, and that means that. And I don't believe that, quite frankly. Um, and I'm not saying that we can't have some knowledge, but I just don't believe that, that you can put your finger on very specifically what all these things mean. And definitely not so, as a matter of factly, the timeline. And I think Jesus did that on purpose, that he didn't intend for us to know exactly when. And so if that kind of bothers you too, that you don't understand or you feel like you can't understand all those things. Maybe you feel like somewhat in a panic because you feel like you need to know those things so that you can be ready uh, when when Jesus returns. But I'm here to tell you tonight that you don't need to know all those things. You really don't. You don't need to know all those things. In fact, what we need to really be focusing on always as Christians uh, is the fact that we need to live a life always ready. If you're living your life always right with Christ, then it doesn't matter when he comes. Because when he comes, we're going to be ready. Uh, for example, uh, many feel that this virus that we're dealing with right now is indeed one of those plagues that Jesus talked about. I do too. I, I believe it. And if so, then it's just one of the many signs that signals to us that our redemption draws not. And so we don't have to freak out about it. But did you ever think over this past, in particular this past five weeks that we've been um, made aware of this COVID-19 virus, did any, any of you ever think, wow, what if the suddenness of this uh, pandemic, the suddenness of this plague of this ma magnitude, what if instead of it being COVID-19 coming upon us suddenly, what if it was the end? What if instead of COVID-19, it was the trumpet? Did you think about that? You know, where would that have caught you spiritually? Would you have been okay? Or would you have been found lacking? Would you have been in a bad place had the end come instead? Now, if that's disconcerting to you, if that makes you uneasy, then I have a little piece of advice that should help you set that, that should help set your mind at ease. In fact, it's scripture. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're able to discern the signs of the time. It doesn't matter if you know what all those things mean, those end time prophecies mean uh, specifically. It doesn't matter. Live life ready. Live a life pleasing to God always and you'll be fine. Uh, let me give you some examples from scripture that, that speak to this point. And I'm just going to read off a, a bunch here for you really quick. Psalm 618 says, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand and I shall not be moved. If, if, if you are living your life every day, setting God before you, always living life according to him, acknowledging him in all, your, in all his ways, and then, then in all your ways, then it's okay. You're going to be ready, whether you discern the times or not. Luke 18, 1 says, 
And he spake a parable unto them to this end. That men ought always to pray and not fight and not faint. It shouldn't take a crisis for you to pray. God says pray always. Good times, bad times. We should always live a life of prayer. Luke 21, 36. The end of this story that we just started off with. says, watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and stand before the Son of Man. You don't have to worry about any of these things. Be ready. John 8, 29 says, And he that has sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. And I realize that was Jesus talking, but if we're following in Jesus' footsteps and we're doing what he, um, WWJD, if, we, if we're doing what he would have done, then we should be living a life always pleasing to God. 1 Corinthians 15, 5 and 8 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, always live a life steadfast. Don't have to scramble and get ready at the last minute. Always live a life that way. Philippians 4 and 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Uh, 1 Peter 3, 15. But sanctify the Lord in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is uh, in you with meekness and fear. Um, I threw that one in there because I, I realize it's, it's a little bit different context about the always. But sometimes when we, when we as Christians, we get all ramped up about the incoming and we, we, we want to, you know, we want to get all evangelistic. And I'm not saying we shouldn't be, but if you're living a life always, right, ready to give an answer, then, then you, you don't have to, you don't have to worry about that. God knows who belongs to him. We don't have to start cramming the gospel down people's thro throats in a, in, a, in a panic and a fearful way. Uh, live a life always to give an answer. Your life should be a witness always that people can see. Right? And when somebody taps you on the shoulder and say, hey, there's something different about you, be ready to give your answer. Uh, so the, 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 the thing that Jesus is saying is that, no, I'm not going to tell you the specific time. You're not going to know the day or the hour. It's not important. It's not important. Live a life always ready to please me. And you realize that the signs uh, that signal the end, they're not only for us who are ready, but they're also warnings to those who are not. It's not God's will that any should perish. And so if you want to catch people off guard, you don't warn them. Right, so Jesus said he's coming as a thief in the night, but I believe that's more for us to keep us on our toes, right, as it is for the other. He's not trying to catch people unaware. Why would you warn folks? What are these signs for, if you will, if it's not to get people's attention? So wh whichever way uh, or however you found yourself in this, in contemplating this thought, okay? If the end would have came five weeks ago and you were good, stay good. Be ready. But if you found yourself coming up short, according to the word, I believe there's some backsliders listening right now. You know you're not living right. And that is not condemnation. I'm just saying it. Here's an opportunity. Look at these warnings. It's not a, a signs of condemnation, but an opportunity to get right with God. He loves you. He wants you to return to him. Right. If you if you've been struggling and you, you can't, you know, keep striving, keep striving. God does not want you to be lost. He doesn't want any of us to be lost. And so if you're ready, stay ready. If you're not ready, get ready. I'm going to read to you Luke 21, 28 again. It says, so when all these things begin to happen, stand and look up. Your salvation is near. This is good news. I think I've said enough for tonight. I'm going to sign off here. I don't have an ending to my broadcast, but I'm going to sign off. And let's pray as we as, as I do so. Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for reminding us of your love, Lord, for reminding us that it's your will that all come to the knowledge of you, Lord. God, help us, Lord Jesus, as we contemplate where we are with you, Lord. We trust that you would show us our hearts, Lord Jesus, that you would uh, help us, Lord Jesus, to take those steps that perhaps we've seen that, that have been hard for us to take in the past to trust you, Lord Jesus. God, give us that measure of faith to take you at your word, oh God. Help us, Lord, to draw closer to you, Lord. 
we love you, Lord Jesus, and we want to be ready at your coming, Lord. We want to be ready even as we live every day uh, that we can um, carry on the mission that you have given us, oh God. Help us, Lord, to be light and salt and all those things that you desire us to be, Lord, um, for your kingdom's sake. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you and look forward to joining you guys again here tomorrow at 7 p.m. God bless.